Okay, in this part of the tutorial, we're going to flesh out some of these methods. We're going to create getter and setter methods. We're going to talk about them a little bit more explicitly. We've talked about them in the past, but not really uh, explicitly. The reason, uh, so good practice, essentially everything you should create is private in a class. You shouldn't give anything direct access to it unless you say that it's final, which means it can never be changed. Like no other class can change it, they can only access it. But if a variable can have uh, different values, or uh, you want it to be a private object that only the class has direct access to, because the class should know how to handle its own variables and objects. But you need to give other classes access to them, so you create what are called getter and setter methods. Now there's two ways to do that, at least in Eclipse. Obviously, uh, you can just type it, or you can hover over a private variable that's in a, as a field and say create getter and setter for x. And it will just automatically generate down below getter and setter methods for x. So get x and set x. Um, and this, again, is just a reference. So x is the variable that's passed over to the method, like whatever somebody else wants to set the value of our x to. And this x is the x that's held, that the, is the field. That's the syntax that's used commonly. Um, you can also, like, if you, you know, you, we could do, like, new x and then because these things no longer have the same name, you wouldn't have to do this. So you could do th x equals new x. And that's another way to do it. So you can either just hover over private variable fields, uh, private fields, or you can just uh, and have them auto-generated, or you can just write them yourself. So public int get y return y. I mean, these things are so quick to write. Sometimes it's faster to type them than it is to... Um, Auto implement them. Set y int new y. So you're saying, hey, whenever somebody uh, wants to use this method, please pass over new y, and we will then just set the value of our y to the new value that you want to set y to. And we'll do the same for all of the fields. So we have uh, dy type width height. I don't think uh, we don't ever need to. Do we need to access width and height? No. All right, so we'll just do public int get dy. I don't think we have to do this, but sometimes it's just easier to create them all at first. Return dy, just in case somebody would need to access your variables. Um, public void set dy int new dy. And then you say dy equals new dy. And then we're going to do that for type public int get type. Return type. And we need to do that for uh, the boolean is on screen, public void get is on screen, return is on screen, and we want to be able to set it, public, oh right, this should be a boolean, public void set is on screen and we're going to pass over in like a, the new boolean value which is like you know off screen oh and this should be is you know uh, not off screen it should be on screen and we just set the value of is on screen to whatever was passed over in on screen either true false value. Uh, right, so we have those getters and setters. We also need to, um, like we do for all the collisions, uh, you know, this thing we need to check if it's ever going to hit the paddle. So we want to create a, a get rectangle method, uh, like we did with the ball and like we did with the paddle. Public rectangle uh, get rect. And we're going to, uh, yeah, we have to import that class. And uh, 
um, we are going to create a new rectangle and return it. Return new rectangle and the dimensions are x, y, width, height because we will have passed those dimensions over to this rectangle object. And that is all get rectangle has to do. All right, let's flesh out some of these methods now. We need to be able to draw this object. So every time we're going to do G, that's the main graphic object for the entire game. We only ever create like one of them primarily. Get our G.setColor. And we're going to just set it to color. Which we haven't uh, done anything with yet, so uh, don't worry. Oh yeah, let's um, and we'll do that in a second. We're gonna set the color in just a second. So and then you do g dot fill rectangle from x to y width height, and these aren't just magical values. We're gonna calculate what these should be over in game panel at least initially, and then in update. Once, so the basic principle is that like the bricks are just going to be there, like the map is going to contain some information about what bricks should be there, and then if the map has a value of four or five in its integer array, it's going to if and if there is a collision at that point, it's going to trigger <coughs> uh, us to create a new power up that then falls from its original position down towards the paddle. So these power-ups are only going to be created if the map has that value and if there is a collision, if the ball hits that brick. And then we'll create one of these power-ups. It's not going to be like the map is sitting there and the power-up is just sitting there. It's going to be that the map and the power-up objects are coordinated, if that makes any sense. So when, when a new power-up object is created, it automatically starts updating. And all it has to do is say y plus equals dy. So it starts to fall towards the bottom because dy goes or because y goes up as it goes down, like down on the screen, and g dot fill rectangle. Oh no, not I'm sorry, g dot fill rectangle. What am I doing? Uh, and then we're gonna say if y is greater than uh, bb main, like if it falls off the screen, we want to set on screen set is on screen to fall. So bb main dot height. If y is greater than that, is on screen should equal false, just so we can tell if we should pay attention to it or not. Um, and then let's deal finally with the color, setting a color. So in the, um, uh, oh yeah, and we have to flesh out the constructor anyway. So this is the constructor method, and it's being passed a bunch of values. So like when we create a power up, it needs to know its location in space. So it, the game panel class is going to pass over start uh, x y start and the type that the uh, and we're going to give it a uh, we don't need to do this actually let's let's not pass over a dy let's just create that randomly and then the width and the height so we're just going to say x equals uh, x start whatever was passed over y equals y start type equals the type um, width equals the width, height equals the height, and now we need to check, because just in case somebody passes over a type that's, n that's neither a 4 nor a 5, we need to set it to that. So we're just going to do if type is greater than 4, uh, no, less than 4, then we're just going to set type to 4 and if type is greater than 5 then we're just going to set type tripe type to 5 and obviously as you add more power up options you would have to make adjustments in all these things uh, and then let's see X Y starts I think that's all right um, da -dup 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 -dup. is this class oh and then we need to uh, randomly generate a DY so um, DY 
So one is kind of slow, four is kind of fast. So maybe we'll generate something between like two and, well, just do one and like five. It doesn't matter, you can play around with this. So y equals, we're gonna cast it to an in integer, dy, and then we're gonna say math.random times the range, times six plus one. And if you want to test what the heck math.random is doing, just go make a tester program and, you know, public static void main and then do a for loop like 0 to 20, just print it out 20 times. System.out.println math.random and see what it's doing and play around with this. But this number is the range of possibilities and this number is the start, like the lowest point at which the range starts. Uh, all right, so I think we have that class fairly well fleshed out. In the next video, we'll actually add it to the board and try and display it. And then in the next video, we'll actually have it do something, I believe. Anyway, that's my plan. All right, that's enough for this one.